So there's a lot of questions out there and a lot of speculation right now, and we're actually gonna define reality as we go through these next couple of slides. The reality is, is that listings are low. We don't have a lot of sellers that are out there. Um, we do know that people's desires to own a home has depleted the number of homes that are on the market. So as we've talked about in some other videos as well, it has depleted the number of homes that are on the market. So that is the bad news of what's happening on the market right now. There's not as many listings. They are at a record low. So let's take a look at where we are in 2022. market update. So let's start running through the zip codes. I am here to share with you what's happening in the real estate market. Let's find out if Bill McBride is correct. Wonder if this inventory will tell the tale. So we're going to go to our local market inventory and find out what's been happening. Let's go to zip code 34949. We have active 41. We have new listings of four. Pending of five. We have active under contract of eight and we have closed of five. That's the north portion of the island. You'll actually notice that northern portion of the island. It is actually considered Fort Pierce. The town of Fort Pierce is the main land of the island, but you'll actually notice that Hutchison Island in the north portion is considered Fort Pierce as well. We'll go into that in some other videos as well. Let's go into zip code 34957. We have active of 60. We have new listings of 12, pending of 14. Active under contract, we have six, and we have closed 11. If you notice, this is the southern portion of Hutchison Island, and then we go on to the mainland as well in Jensen Beach. You know, if you haven't heard of Jam and Jensen lately, that's gonna be in another video as well, and you really wanna look into that video on Jensen Beach. 34952, we have active of 66. New listings, we have 19. Then we go into the pending of 12. We have active under contract of 20. We have an expired of three, and we have closed of 10. Now that's gonna be on the mainland. That's gonna take you over near the Savannas. Uh, that's gonna be a little bit east of US-1, but a little bit west of US-1 as well. And we can talk about Savannas as well. There's land leases over there you wanna be conscious of. Let's talk about zip code 34982, active of 32. Then we're gonna have new listings of 10, pending of one. Active under contract, we have four, expired zero. And then we have closed six. So we wanna take a look at our last video as well and make a comparison of what is happening right now. That really does tell us what's happening in the market. And that's why we do these market updates to make sure that we know what's happening in the market. Let's go down into Stewart, 34994. That's gonna take you across the bridge, north and south of the bridge. Uh, that's active listings, 31. There's going to be new listings, nine, pending four. Active under contract is four, and then closed, four. And if you take a look at that map, and you notice where that area is there in Stewart. Now, that does incorporate, incorporate some of that area there in Stewart, the northern section, and a little bit of that southern section of Stewart. Let's go over to 34996 next. There's going to be active 22, new listing seven, pending three, and then we have active under contract three, closed eight. If you notice, there's a portion of Sewell's Point there, the really southern tip of Hutchison Island, uh, and then you'll notice uh, that whole area there uh, of Stewart, that, uh, let's see, eastern portion of Stewart as well as that you'll see. So what do we want to expect in the 22 housing market? What to expect in the 2022 housing market? And is buyer demand slowing? And the other question is, are you thinking about buying or selling? You want to contact me to determine if now is the time to go ahead and sell. 
you know, there's a lot of factors and that's why we do this market update as well as the information I'm sharing with you because the information that I'm getting ready to share with you, this is across the United States. So there's factors across the United States that affect us as well. So the bad news across the entire United States is that listings are at record lows. As we take a look at what's happening across the country, if you take a look all the way across the country, you're gonna notice that Florida is actually down by 48%. You know, the average, as you notice on this, this slide here is that the average across the United States is 26.8%. But the truth is we're not gonna reach our market potential because we can't sell what we don't have. If we had more inventory, we probably would see more houses sold than we probably have ever seen, but we don't have as many houses to sell. So we just wanna let you know, probably won't happen. Now, showings traditionally lag during the holiday season, but the data we're seeing tells us that buyer demand remains strong. The fact that every region showed a year-over-year -year increase indicates that buyers are undeterred and that they're still out there buying, as you can see. And then the other thing that we've noticed is that showings crush the pre-pandemic numbers. I mean, as you can notice from this slide, we're up 175.7 in 2021, but you noticed in 2020, during some of the lockdown, we were down to 156.3. Then if you notice, it actually went down a little bit lower. So we actually have gone up quite a bit from what we were before. That inventory shortage it's definitely making a difference in what we're seeing as far as the showings. We just don't have what we need, so we just can't sell what we don't have. If we don't have the inventory, it's going to make a difference in what we can sell in the real estate market and in the inventory this year. So the biggest question a lot of people have is, will this wave affect the real estate business. It could affect people's delay, but we don't really think that that's going to be a long term. It could be in the next couple of weeks. It could be in January. Not saying that it will, but it could affect what's happening long term. Now we're going to go into later in this video, what has happened with forbearance and what's happened with foreclosure. So hang in there a little bit with me because we're going to go into that as well, because a lot of people talked about a bubble and they've been waiting for what's going to happen. So bear with me a little bit because this video builds upon what's actually happening as far as that goes as well. That lack of inventory means that buyers are really out there still looking for what's available. So the showings are still really strong, as you can see from those previous uh, slides that we showed. Showing time does measure the activity. Let's talk about these showings. Now these showings cross pre-pandemic numbers and these are actually the last few Novembers. So let's talk about the last few Novembers from this slide. This would actually be the activity uh, 2017, 18, 19, 20, and 21. These are all of the Novembers and traditionally the showings actually lag during this season. But if you take a look, you'll actually notice that the showings have increased. The showings have gone up to 175.7. So we do know that the buyers are out there in force. They are motivated by a lot of different things right now. They could be out there in anticipation of the rising interest rates. It could be a scenario where they're thinking something might have changed in work or in life or something that has changed something different maybe in their life. But we do know that the buyers are out there in force because we are looking at this slide that tells us that they are out there in force. The numbers are higher than they were pre-pandemic. So we know that the buyers are out there in force right now. You can definitely tell by the numbers that are in gray 
that those numbers were much lower than they are right now. You can tell at 98.2 in 2018, and then 107.2 in 2019, and now we're up to 175.7 in 2021. So we do know that the market's moving, but we do need more listings on the market. A lot of people already know that. And so hang in there with me till the end of this because there's some more information that I have for you because you might already know that part. A lot of the experts are talking about it right now, but there's some great opportunities out there, you know, still for people to buy property. So let's take a few moments to talk about the home equity. You know, there's a current situation with home equity that we really need to take a look at. We have a lot of numbers in home equity that a lot of people don't realize right now. So there might be a bit of an opportunity in home equity. You know, do you know how much your home is worth? Many people don't. So as we start talking about this monthly market report or this weekly market report, let's talk about how much equity that you have. So there's a lot of people across the United States that have an average home equity of $57,000. That is what, that's what core equity actually says, core logic, I'm sorry, actually says. So it's pretty amazing what they actually say, $57,000. And then they talk about 31.1% year over year is the percentage increase in equity for the U.S. home ownership. So let's just go back. Very simple. So many people over the cross the entire United States we're talking about have approximately $57,000 worth of equity in their home. So that means a lot of people may not have gone into forbearance or foreclosure. So we're gonna go into that conversation in just a moment. Let's go into the actual year-over-year uh, -over -year increase in equity in the United States for homeowners in their mortgage. And then we actually have a little bit of a quote here from CoreLogic that I'm gonna go into. This summer, home price growth reached the highest level in more than 45 years, 45 years, pushing equity gains to another record high. So there's a lot of home equity that people have in their home. So even if they were in a situation last year where their home might have not gone up as much as they needed it to, it may have gone up this year. So meaning 2019, then into 20, uh, 21, now we're going into 22. So let's say maybe in 21, they got more equity in their home as well. And now they're going into 22. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about the home equity. We're gonna talk about forbearance as well. So a couple months ago, every major city, it was cheaper to buy a home than it was to rent when you start to consider the equity. So if it was in every major city across the United States that it was cheaper to buy a home because the amount of equity than it was to rent, that's a little bit about what we're talking here. So let's take a little bit of a look at our next slide. So over the last five Septembers, not only have equity gains helped homeowners more seamlessly transition out of forbearance and avoid a distressed sale, but they've also enabled many to continue building their wealth. And that's by Frank Martell, president and CEO of CoreLogic. So that's not even just from me, that's actually from Frank Martell from CoreLogic as well. Now let's go into what's happening potentially with the mortgage rates. So the mortgage rates and the projection of what's happening with the mortgage rates, that's a little bit of a concern that we might be having. So as the mortgage rates rise, it'll cost more to buy a home. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening with the mortgage rates. 
So in quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four, historically rates have been very high and then they went very low. So let's talk about what's happening with the interest rates now. So the interest rates as of right now, what we're anticipating, the anticipation is that in 2022, that the interest rate will be, right? What it will be, not exactly what it is, but what we're anticipating what it will be. So we have Freddie Mac that's actually coming in at 3.4%. We have Fannie Mae coming in at what, 3.2%. Um, we have NAR, the National Association of Realtors, coming in at 3.3%. And then we have an average of all four coming in at 3.3%. Now, if you notice this graph, actually, there's quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. There's an anticipation that that interest rate is going to actually increase each one of the quarters. So it'll continue to go up. What does that do to the price of the property that you purchase? Well, if the interest rate goes up, the amount of property that you can afford tends to actually go down. So that's part of what you can anticipate for the real estate market. Let's take a look from here past the interest rates and what starts to happen next for you. So we're anticipating 3.3, 3.45, 3.5, 3.7. What happens from there with the interest rates? So moving on from the interest rates from here, we go into forbearance. Now forbearance did drop again. The forbearance finally dropped below 1 million. Investors are waiting for the foreclosures. They may not see any or they may see very few. So part of this that we talked about previously in this video is that there may not be as many forbearance or as many foreclosures or as many of those discounted properties that need the repair because people have so much equity. And you can see that by this slide. So as this says, not just me, but McClare Bolton Smith from CoreLogic says, we may see a little bit of an uptick in foreclosure rates in 2022, just an uptick though, from an extraordinary low, we're not expecting to see a big increase. So we're maybe a little uptick, just a short uptick, but nothing major. I've had quite a few investors say to me, we're gonna wait for the market. We're gonna wait for all those foreclosures. Well, each one of these videos, I keep seeing the same thing, that we may not see that large number like we did back, way back when all those short sales came onto the market. So they also say, we're not expecting to see a big increase. We expect delinquency rates overall on home mortgages to actually continue to remain quite, quite low. And that's actually from McClara Bolton Smith, the senior leader of research core logic. So it actually represents like 1.6 of the mortgage loans that are out there. So we're just not anticipating as many foreclosures that might have originally been anticipated. Although through these videos, we just haven't anticipated an awful lot of them coming out of forbearance and going into foreclosure. So not anticipating a lot of them, and just as they're actually verifying in this slide as well. Now it doesn't mean that it's not a good time to buy. It still is a great time to buy. It just means that some of those forbearances and some of those foreclosures may not be coming on the market. And let's talk about some of the appreciation that we're still anticipating. Now on this slide that I'm sharing with you now, we're still averaging to about a 5.2 appreciation. That's still up by a 0.1% appreciation. And I shared that with someone that I was speaking to today. So we're still up 0.1% in about a month's time frame. And this actually from Fannie Mae, they're saying 7.4%. We have, uh, let's see, CoreLogic saying 6%. We have, um, 
MBA uh, at 5.1%. Oh my goodness, who do we have as well? NAR is even at 2.8%, but we have an average of all of these at 5.2%. Now in the last video, if you go through the playlist here as well, you'll notice that it was at a 5.1%. Now we're anticipating a 5.2%. So that means we're up 0.1%. We're still anticipating the properties are going to go up. We're not anticipating. I heard from someone to say today that they thought from the news that prices were going to go down. So we always talk about what's going to happen with prices and what's going to happen for the forecast of 2022. Now, buying now before the interest rates increase is mission critical to that affordability lens. So has home price acceleration peaked? This is still important. It's such an important part of whether you're buying now or whether you're going to wait. So as the home price acceleration shifts and changes, I don't necessarily know that it's peaked. If you take a look at what's happening in this graphic, we start out at 10%. We're starting at an historical high appreciation. But if you look at it, it looks like it's kind of leveled off somewhat. Not necessarily that it's going to continue to go up or that it's going to continue down, but it may have peaked quite a bit. So we'll see if that's what actually happened. Going on to our next slide as well. So overall, I do think that 2022 will be another strong year for housing, albeit a little bit higher mortgage rates. And we do think home sales will continue to rise and actually reach a 16 year high in 2022. And that's why I'm in Claire Bolton Smith, again, the senior leader of research at CoreLogic. So, what we don't think is going to happen is prices are going to go dropping. We don't anticipate that what happened in the past, where the prices had gone up that 10%, where they're going to go down that 10%. That's not what we're anticipating with what all is happening right now. So that's one of the things that it's very important to note. Appreciation is still very, very strong in this market. We anticipate that the appreciation is still going to continue in 2022. But if you look at our appreciation now for 2022, it's anywhere from 7.5% down to 28 but we do see an average of about 5.2% at this point. So that really does give you about what's happening with that average interest rate. That's pretty much what's happening or what we're anticipating will happen for the housing market in 2022.